BI Connector allows you to access your MongoDB data from a BI tool. So it could be Tableau, which is what I'm going to demo today, or it could be any other reporting tool that can speak SQL because it ends up connecting to the BI Connector, which runs between the MongoDB server or cluster, as the case may be for you, and the BI reporting tool. The reporting tool connects to the connector. The connector tells it the schema that you have, as you know, MongoDB does not have a fixed schema, so we have to represent something that approximates the schema of the data that is in your database. And then as the SQL queries come in from the BI reporting tool, or really any source, the BI Connector translates them to MongoDB native queries or aggregations as appropriate. And when it gets back the results as BSON, it translates them into SQL to send that back to your BI reporting tool. So I have a, a pretty small database. Uh, it's an extract from Yelp. As you know, Yelp has, you know, businesses, there are reviews, and there are users. And you can see that, as you would expect, these are not flat documents. The data is somewhat structured. In case of users, we have several arrays. Uh, we have arrays of friends. Here's a very popular person. These are all user IDs of their friends. We collect votes about somebody's reviews. And of course, reviews are things that we all write. So each one is written by a user, pertains to a business, and it generally will have some sort of a text there. What I did was I ran a couple of utilities. So there's a Mongo schema gen utility, which connected to the Yelp data, and it generated the schema file. It generates it in a format we call document relational definition language. And it's a very simple text, kind of a, a YAML-like format, which you could edit. So if you know you're going to be adding fields or if you want to remove some fields because you don't need to report on them, you could actually manually or via script adjust that file before passing it to a utility called Mongo Dreidel, which takes the DRDL file and loads that schema into BI connector as well as configuring appropriate permissions so that you can authenticate to the connector and it can authenticate to MongoD to actually get the data. So let's see what that might look like. Here in Tableau, and I'll show you how these data sources were set up. So I was connecting to localhost, which is where the BI connector is running. I named the database BI. I'm logging in there as myself. Now here I pulled out the user table. And you could see that all of the fields that exist in the user table have been kind of flattened into a relational schema. But of course, because the data is sparse, there are some null fields. So if a field doesn't exist in a particular record, we simply see it represented as a null, which is, of course, what a tabular relational schema requires. Now, we might have wanted to see what percent of the users you know, are responsible for majority of reviews, or how many reviews on average does a user write. Here, I just did a very simple visualization, right? I showed review count, and the columns here is sum of the number of records. So essentially, how many users have one review? Well, 57,000 users have only written one review. Now there's, uh, I believe, 333,000 users altogether, right? You could see that, you know, fewer users contributed two reviews, 30,000 contributed three reviews. And by the time we're into the double digits of reviews, the number of people that are contributing them is dropping significantly. So you can imagine how now you can use the power of Tableau to interactively explore what percent of the users are contributing, what percent of the content, right? So I decided to do the same thing for businesses. Now here, what I did is the business record includes the longitude and latitude. Now going back to the data source for business, I actually added a filter. Even though what's being sent is SQL, Tableau allows you to specify it in a pretty nice way, right? You can select the field on which you want to filter, and then it offers you a list of values. So I said, I only want to see reviews for the state of Nevada. And so, of course, all of these reviews are for the state of Nevada. We have longitude and latitude. From that, I was able to drag those as dimensions, which automatically picked, you know, a map visualization. And what I did now is I said that the color should represent an average review, so average stars. So color is going to represent how high their rating is. Right, so we could see the darkest green is 
five, so five star rating. Uh, four star rating is green. Three is going to be that neutral gray. And then two stars is red. And then one star is really dark red. Then the size of each business, because each data point represents, you know, essentially a longitude latitude, which probably will represent the number of reviews. So you could see that in this particular extract of the data, the most reviewed businesses only have, you know, 40 to 47 reviews. And of course, there's plenty of businesses that only have a single review because, you know, they're scattered somewhere, right? Distinct count of reviews. One, right? One. Now, if you're familiar with Las Vegas area, and, you know, if you use Tableau, you might have been because their conference in October is in Las Vegas, you can kind of tell that this line right here represents the strip. And, of course, the businesses that have the most reviews are all kind of close to the strip because, well, that's where a lot of people go. And the more people go there, the more reviews you're going to have. What else can we do? Let's see if we can figure out how many businesses are at each location. Now, the underscore ID, that's the business ID. In fact, so that it's easier for us to remember that, we can actually come here and we could rename it, right? Let's call it business ID just so that it's easier to read. Now, it shows us the remote field name is underscore ID, right? So in MongoDB, it's a regular underscore ID primary key. By the way, when you see dots in names, it means that that's a sub-document in MongoDB. So we'll go back here. There's the business ID. We drag that into a tooltip. And now here we will get account distinct. And let's see what that does to it. So at this location, we have 19 distinct business IDs. And at this fairly large circle, we have 141. Obviously, you know, a lot of these small points have a single business, which just have a, a single review. So the best way to see how you could use the BI connector, which is going to be available towards the end of this year with version 3.2 as part of Enterprise Advanced, is to wait until it's released and then try it out. You don't have to use it with Tableau. You could use it with your own favorite BI tool. The BI connector receives connections and can speak the same wire protocol that Postgres database does. So if your reporting tool can connect via ODBC, we will have an ODBC driver that you will be able to use from your tool to the BI connector. And of course, the BI connector is going to talk to your Mongo cluster natively using the MongoDB wire protocol.